another interesting point I'd like to point out is that this guy wants to base uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 18 verse 18 as support for Muhammad based upon a chapter in Deuteronomy that Muslims often claim isn't even from Moses, that isn't even valid prophecy. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 10, which this guy is quoting, um, they want to say was written after Moses. So even if that's true, that would mean that a prophet has not risen among the people of Israel like unto Moses, besides what I've already said, would also mean that only up until this time, when this chapter was written and then put into the text, of course I don't believe that, as the Almighty himself uh, indicates, as this chapter itself indicates, when describing the death of, of Moses, that Moses would die according to the word of the Lord. What word of the Lord? The word of the Lord that we're, that we're reading in this chapter. <laughs> this is the record of his death. In any case, uh, let's go on to Muhammadin. Song of Songs, chapter 5, verse 16. Muslims want to claim that this is proof or evidence, whatever, that Muhammad is referred to in the Torah. All right. Let's assume that it's referring to Muhammad. How can we get from point A, that you assume this refers to Muhammad, to point B, that this guy, who you think is referring to Muhammad in the, in the Tanakh, will actually teach all the things that were taught uh, in the Qur'an? Um, if it's a prophecy of some guy to come whose name will be Muhammad, fine. But if he's going to be a prophet, it will be in accordance with the uh, commandments of the Almighty already given in the Torah, which means that he would not add to or take away from the Torah. But besides this, you should know for your own sake, um, you who desire to bring Jews, Christians, and other uh, people whom you consider led astray to Islam, you should understand when your proofs are weak because otherwise you won't succeed or you won't know how to improve your uh, explanations in order to bring more people to you. If you use the same method that you're using for Muhammad in Song of Songs chapter 15 verse, uh, Song of Songs chapter 5 verse, six, verse 16, if you want to consider this an acceptable proof that Muhammad would be a prophet, then all the more so should we accept the proofs of Christians when they take the Hebrew word for salvation, which is almost exactly the same as the Hebrew pronunciation of, of Jesus, and, and from this find him referred to throughout the Bible, because you can imagine how many times the word salvation appears throughout the Tanakh, throughout the Hebrew Bible. In fact, they can even prove from this that he will be God and man, which surely, uh, dear Muslims, you will agree, is wrong. You can only find a few places where there's a similar term in reference to Muhammad in the Tanakh. But Christians can find hundreds of places if they would use Hebrew. Please learn Hebrew, dear Christians. For your own sakes, it's the language of the one who you worship. The language of angels. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so sorry. Um, an example I would like to give is uh, Isaiah chapter 52, verse 10. Um, if there it says that the Almighty will lay bare his salvation before all the nations, they will see his salvation, all right? Salvation here, Yeshua, Yeshua T, okay? My salvation. Uh, Yeshua T Elohim, the salvation of the, of the venerable authority. Now, if you take that together with the many places in the book of Psalms where the Almighty is said to be salvation, so that means that we will see the Almighty, who is salvation. And of course, since salvation is Yeshua, and Jesus' actual name is Yeshua, that means that it's the same. It's a much smaller difference between Muhammadin. Uh, that's not even the correct pronunciation. I'm getting influenced by you guys. It's supposed to be Muhammadin. The M sound is, is not elongated, and there's no U in the first syllable. In any case, yeah, I think, <laughs> I hope you guys get it. 
Muslims often transliterate this word on their YouTube clips as Muhammadin with two M's, Muhammadin, you see? But the Hebrew is Mahamadin. Ma, not Mu. So, Mahamad and not Muhammad. It's not M, mm, it's Ma. And it's not Mu, it's Ma. I agree that there is similarity, but that's simply because they're both Semitic languages. <laughs> what do you expect? This word is spoken all the time here in Israel. Uh, and that doesn't mean that these people are uh, Muhammad. I'm sure that there were other people before Muhammad arose which had similar names. And uh, if you take every place which has a name or a word similar to Muhammad and sound and want to apply it to the one you consider a prophet, then you will be misapplying references to thousands, possibly millions of people with a similar name throughout history to your own prophet. In fact, there are even Jews with names like this. Also, Jews use this very same term, but not in the plural, not Muhammadin, not Muhammadin, but Muhammad, uh, in reference to the Messiah and the Creator in Jewish songs. Get familiar with Jewish literature and a lot of uh, the misconceptions will fade away. But first, I please beg you, learn Hebrew. Don't go off uh, foolish hearsay and anti-Semitic translations. Uh, yeah, I think it's time to see how long this clip was.